There you go. Good evening, and welcome to the March 4th meeting of the Issaquah uh, Development Commission. Tonight is, uh, we'll be conducting a community conference, and the project is the Fieldstone Memory Care. Uh, the request is an application for community conference by, submitted by Cascadia Development uh, to develop an Alzheimer's and temporary care community. Uh, 60 units, uh, of those 60 units, 52 will be private units. Uh, the format for this evening's meeting will be that we'll start off with a review and approval of the minutes from the last one, and then we will have a presentation by this, the staff, uh, and then you, the applicant, will have an opportunity to make your presentation. We'd appreciate it if when anybody that wants to speak uh, would, when you start, would you identify yourself with your name and your uh, business address, the name of your company and business address. If there are any members of the public that would like to speak about the, uh, tonight or to ask questions, We'd ask that you sign in there and do the same thing. You could get up to speak in the public section of it if you'd identify yourself uh, with your name and your address. Uh, after the applicant has uh, spoken, we will have an opportunity for individual members of the Development Commission to seek clarification of either the applicants or the, the staff. And uh, after that, there will be an opportunity for each commissioner to make uh, observations and or recommendations based on the presentations to that point, okay? So with that, we will go to the minutes. Uh, does anybody have any changes they would like to see in the minutes as they were presented to us? Uh, Mr. Morning. Chair, one change on the second to last page of the minutes. Under revised condition C-5, in mm -hmm. the paragraph that starts out, moved by Morgan, seconded by Swedberg, um, the, it should stay, the building design shall incorporate architectural treatments reviewed by and acceptable to the city council to mitigate the blank walls. Okay. You got that? Okay, are there any other changes requested in the minutes? If so, all right, do we have a... Mr. Chair, I move we approve the minutes of the meeting from the February... 18th. 18th, right? 18th, 18th yes. Second. Development. There's a motion to approve and a second. Is there any further discussion? And all in favor of approving the minutes as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. We will now have a presentation by the city staff. Sorry, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. All right. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Woods, and I'm a planner in DSD. Good evening to all of you. I don't know if I've met you all. Um, I'll be introducing the application COM 15-00001 Fieldstone Memory Care Community Conference. So I wanted to, um, given that you've been dealing with a lot of SDPs here lately, I wanted to um, just bring up the purpose of a community conference, which is to generate discussion, raise issues, and propose creative options relative to the proposed project. Um, in addition, there are some expectations, excuse me, for the applicant <coughs> Um, that come out of the community conference, the applicant can expect that the more information provided um, allows for more input from the commission. Input provided comes before a decision is made, which is very helpful. Um, inconsistencies with comprehensive plan can be discussed. Creative approaches to constraints um, on the site can be discussed. Recommended modifications can be discussed. And additional modifications to the proposal will need to be made before the SDB public hearing, which is uh, a good way for the applicant to know what you want to see modifications as it regards the code uh, before you're making a decision about it. So. Here is a map of the site and its context to the rest of the city. I um, labeled I-90 just because it's a pretty good um, identifier, as well as Lake Sammamish State Park. It is the property shaded in black with the white star on it, way up in the north part of the city. Here's an aerial photograph of that site um, closer to the site. Um, I've labeled Issaquah Highlands, East Lake Sammamish, or the routes to get to e uh, Issaquah Highlands, East Lake Sammamish Parkway, and then 
kind of where it is in context to uh, King County and the city of Sammamish, which is up the road a little bit. Here's a closer um, aerial photo of the site. You can see it a little better. Here are some um, photographs of the actual site um, as I walked it. Um, you can see that the, um, the numbers listed correspond to the pictures beside the um, aerial photograph in the center. Um, and these are just some perspectives from, um, from pedestrian places, the sidewalks adjacent to the property. And I'll leave those up for a second if you wanna look at them. And I can always go back to this slide if you need me to as well. So about the proposal, the circulation and parking, there is one driveway to the development from Southeast Issaquah Falls City Road. There won't be any connection to Highlands Drive. Uh, there is, um, the, well, the exact driveway location is, um, and any channelization requirements as part of this proposal are evaluated during SEPA review and traffic mitigation. The driveway then connects to the parking lot, which then connects to the front of the building. So that's how you get into the site and actually get into the building. Um, there will be a sidewalk planner revision on Issaquah Falls City Road. As of right now, the sidewalk's right next to the street, but the city standard requires that there be a planner in between the sidewalk and the curb. And the internal circulation uh, vehicularly is through the parking lot in the center there. And that's what you see, you see here. The front entrance is starred to the building right here, and I've circled the driveway right here. I also wanted to mention that there is a regional trail. This is the yellow dash line right here um, on the east side of the property. Buildings and site design. Uh, most develop, or the development standards can be met, um, setbacks, building height, impervious surface. Um, we're at a, a conceptual phase um, now, but there will be more detail provided as we go through the development process. Um, but I wanted to clarify that one of the standards that I had pointed out, um, thank you, Commissioner Morgan, was wrong. And I wanted to go ahead and clarify exactly what the applicant has proposed thus far. The, there's no, I, I want to clarify too, there's no tree removal in the critical area or its buffer. So we're only talking about tree retention outside those areas. Um, the retention required is 25%. It is 639 inches. They're proposing to retain 1,738 inches, which is a lot. They're meeting that requirement. So they won't need an AAS if they continue to retain this many caliper inches of trees. Um, there is a critical area at the very south of the property here. It's this big, round, circular thing here. It is a wetland, um, and there's a buffer to it as well. And the building design and the landscaping, um, we're reviewing against the green sheet, so they will need to meet the provisions of the green sheets as well. And um, I am here for any questions about process. Um, the applicant also has a presentation that I'll get ready to go. So if you want to come up and present. There you go. Hi there, Justin Yonka with Cascadia Development, um, address 4120 Inglewood Avenue in Yakima, Washington, 98908. Doug Ellison with Cascadia Development, same address. Want me to repeat it? <laughs> So um, just a little background on, on our companies here. Um, two years ago, Doug and I started Cascadia Development and Senior Living. Uh, obviously, development is the, the development arm, going out, entitling land, putting a, a, a building together for our senior living operating company, Cascadia Senior Living. So um, we're the principals of the development company. Um, the senior living company, we're growing. <clears throat> Currently, we have a, a president, Wayne Purdom, who's here, a uh, controller, uh, a vice president of healthcare, vice president of communications and HR, and, um, and a part-time bookkeeper. So um, at, at this point, we've developed one community in Yakima. Um, we worked for a national uh, real estate investment company for a number of years doing senior housing, multifamily, student housing. 
spread out across the country. We wanted to do something local. We both grew up in Yakima. Um, uh, wanted to do something local, do something um, uh, that wasn't so spread out. You know, our goal here is to do eight to 10 communities, have a, uh, a core corporate team that can be nimble, make decisions. Uh, we can drive to a community within two or three hours and, and be home at night. So that's kind of our, our overall goal here. Um, so right now we've got the Yakima community that opened in July and we're about 70% occupied. Uh, we projected a two year lease up, so we're doing very well. Um, and that's a standalone memory care, uh, exactly the, the same type of uh, service and care that we're uh, proposing here. Um, we've got two properties in Kennewick, um, a standalone memory care, and then uh, independent assisted living that are in construction. Uh, the memory care is projected to open in July and uh, the independent assisted living November, December. Um, we've also got some other projects in the pipeline, two in Puyallup, and second one in Yakima next to our memory care. Um, and um, what am I missing? That's it. So, um, Yeah, the history of this project, we put this land under contract in August of 2013. So we've been at this site for a long time. Our initial meeting with the city triggered this archeological survey. And, um, and so, you know, uh, we've been at that since the beginning. Um, got the survey done because there's another site nearby um, that came up uh, when I think they cut that road in. Um, so it qualified as a national site. Uh, we, we ended up working with the state to get a permit and, and do, you know, just kind of follow the process. There's this, this DAP permit that went in and did further investigation to try and identify who was there, when they were there, what they were doing there, uh, because mainly because of that wetlands area and a trail from uh, the sea to the eastern Washington. It was kind of a main route for, for a lot of tribes. So. Um, uh, we've been, you know, uh, basically last week we got the <coughs> final, final report and um, where we ended up is uh, we did data recovery where we were going, uh, where we're projecting our, our deepest excavation at the site to be. Um, SWCA was the consultant. They went in, mined a lot of material. Um, it, it was a lot of fire modified rock. We had one arrowhead. And, um, and that's really about it. So it wasn't anything too exciting. I know they were expecting more. Um, but the landowner has actually <coughs> requested that that goes back to the Snoqualmie tribe. And so uh, part of the mitigation that, that we're working with the tribe is to do a, some sort of a, a presentation, probably in our <coughs> lobby area, of, of what the land was used for, how it was used, and, and, and basically an educational piece within our community. Um, and we'll, we'll have some of those artifacts there um, as well. So um, the only outstanding issues on that, it's, it's basically a, a done, um, uh, a done um, I don't even know what you call it. It's a, a, the final report is complete. Um, the only piece that's outstanding is construction monitoring. So they'll evaluate and, and be on site when we're excavating to make sure we're just digging in the areas we said we were going to dig in. Um, the wetlands, uh, obviously it's a huge wetlands area, you know, the usable acreage of the site is about, you know, two and a half to three acres where the site's uh, significantly more. So um, one of the areas that we know we're probably going to need to get an administrative adjustment is the buffer. Um, it's 75 feet is the standard and uh, a reduction in that area um, up to 75 percent, I believe, is the, 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 the max would be 56 feet. Our current site plan is around 60 feet, so we're not, we're not pushing it as far um, as the 75 percent would allow, but that's one area that, that um, we know we'll need an adjustment for. Um, the trees, like Jennifer said, um, Originally, we thought we were going to need an adjustment on that as well. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case. We are still tweaking the footprint slightly, but it's not going to make um, a huge difference on that retention requirement. 
Um, you know, we've, we've worked with the Sammamish Plateau, we've got our certificates, and we've actually got the, the development extension agreement drafted. Uh, it just needs to be executed, so we've got that work complete. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we've had multiple meetings with the staff um, in the planning department, and um, you know, uh, well over a year at this, so um, we've got a lot of good feedback from them and have been through multiple iterations of the site plan um, just to get here. So, um, overview of the project. You want to talk about this one? Sure. So it's a. Excuse 16 me. Can I? Can, uh, sure. Each person, when you speak, for the record keeping, could you Absolutely. just say, "I'm." We've already got your name, but just so she, the records will show who is speaking. Yeah, Doug Ellison speaking now. Uh, it's a 60 unit, 68 bed uh, Alzheimer dementia community that specializes in in Alzheimer dementia and Parkinson's. Um, it's a private pay community. We um, wanted to have the majority of the units as private studio units, so there's no not two people in a room. Um, it's a one-story, 42,000 square foot. We're licensed by DSHS, um, and we work with the Department of Health um, with our drawings, our architectural design, et cetera, to make sure we meet all the standards with that. Um, the building is a unique building. It, um, let me see where the photo, where do you? There's photos at the end here, yeah, yeah. Let me go to the next slide. Okay, perfect. Let's go here. So we, we've created this environment that, um, with Alzheimer's and dementia, there's a lot of anxiety. Um, there's, you know, all kinds of issues associated with the disease. And when you take people out of the community to the doctor's office or to town, um, it's there's a lot of anxiety with them. So we wanted to create an environment where we had town the town actually built inside the building. And so this is the center of the building. We have a theater. We've got a 50s diner. We've got an art studio that they can come and do paintings and crafts. We've got a hair salon, spa. We have a serenity room. The serenity room is uh, for hand massages with Alzheimer's and dementia. Sometimes there's some agitation. So we do some hand massages and, and calms them down a bit. Um, that's the center of the building. And then the wings that, that go off of the center of the building, I, and you probably have that in front of you, but. Um, we have 20 foot corridors, so instead of a hallway that's six foot, which is required, minimum requirement by the state, we have 20 foot hallways where they come out and there's activities and, and different living spaces in that big corridor. Um, that too is, is because of the anxiety. You come out to this narrow hallway, you get claustrophobic. And so we've created this, this environment to really benefit the disease and um, so we're excited about it and on the on the living areas there's a great room dining living room with a fireplace a, a solarium kind of a sunroom area and this is all with a courtyard in the middle for um, outdoor activities it's all secured with walking paths and, and we're going to have some flower beds and raised beds where they can plant flowers and vegetables etc so uh, that's what that is, and I think that other slide was, that's our courtyard in Yakima. Um, water feature in the middle, kind of a potting shed on the outside area here. Um, this is, the bottom picture is the corridor, that wide corridor where they come out of their rooms. Um, they're able to play games and you know, puzzles and different things. And we have different colors, there's a blue color, green, there's three different colors and it helps them remember what you know color their room is. It kind of draws them to that. They also have memory boxes uh, that are outside each of the rooms that have their name and pictures of their family, etc. Some of the artwork you see in the middle there, we've gone to the local museum in Yakima and um, they gave us the rights to print, reprint a bunch of pictures from the you know, agriculture days, you know, back in the old time Yakima days so that there's memories and that sort of thing. And we're gonna do the same thing here, you know, the Issaquah area, get some history and 
and that sort of thing in there. Uh, you see the dining room on the left and fireplace there on the right. Um, so let's go back here. That's an aerial shot of uh, the building. On the front of the building, we have the stacked stone. Um, you know, we have cedar siding as well as the board and bat, as well as the, um, what's the other siding we got on there? Uh, shake. Shake. And so it just kind of breaks it up a little bit, makes it more unique. We have several different colors, some greens and, and taupes. Uh, just to make it a rich looking building so yeah and this is Justin Yonker again you know um, we've put a lot of a thought into this building and and trying to do things a little differently we've also been the first community in the state to be approved for a, a, it's called the the GE Intel quiet care system it's technology it's it's motion uh, based technology that that grabs onto um, um, what's the, the you know the routines of the residents, and when things outside of those routines um, come up, it sends a page to caregivers. So if it's uh, abnormal trips to the bathroom or somebody's in the bathroom for an extended period of time, it's kind of a proactive tool using technology. You know that's actually uh, we've had multiple times in our Yakima community where it's really, you know, saved a resident, you know, they're getting help in five minutes, whereas, you know, the, the rounds every hour or so, it might have been 45 minutes that they would have been sitting there. So, um, pretty cool stuff. Um, that's an overview here. And then, you know, kind of just our typical staff, um, you know, we'll have an executive director that oversees everything. Uh, director of Community Relations, which is the sales and marketing piece, an office manager, um, the director of nursing, obviously the healthcare component is the biggest component. Most of our staff are caregivers, um, so that's a, that's a key role. Um, the resident care coordinator kind of helps with the DON on um, uh, assessments, paperwork. There's lots of uh, paperwork, you know, with each new resident and care plans and revised care plans. Um, life enrichment coordinator, that's a, a key position, um, keeping our residents engaged. We've got a lot of uh, great space in our buildings and, and utilizing it. Um, one other thing about the building, um, you know, our, we have so many visitors coming in because it's, it's kind of a unique thing, it's fun. Kids like it, you know, that town square, I mean, people just really enjoy it. We've had uh, Chamber of Commerce events, uh, board member meetings. I mean, it's getting utilized by more than just, you know, um, uh, resident family members. So um, that's pretty nice. Um, the head chef, uh, obviously, you know, um, uh, you know, room and board covers all the meals, housekeeping, um, uh, you know, and then just uh, a maintenance person. So that's kind of our general uh, staffing schedule. Um, you know, the, this building in Yakima is laid out in a U-shape, but all of those components, the town square, the great room, and the, the resident wings, all of that is incorporated into the Issaquah building. It's just laid out a little differently. So um, I think that's all we have. So if you guys have questions or want us to elaborate. Uh, actually, I'll uh, start because I do have a question. Do you have, uh, Jennifer, do you have an end of, uh, identification of uh, the uh, it just says from Dean I, th I guess these are all all three of these questions <clears throat> are from the same person yes that, that was the only comment that I received it was I received it via email and it was anonymous with the exception of the email address okay um, so it'd be hard <clears throat> to get just hit reply, right? But I do, uh, I wanted the first issue that he brings up or she brings up, uh, the ponds feed into Issaquah Creek. Uh, and I know there's extensive uh, material in here about the wetlands and the, where the water goes and the plans to retain stormwater uh, runoff. But could you go over those a little bit, please, for us? And then also specifically, the concern that was expressed by this member of, pub of the public that that wetland area drains into Issaquah Creek 
and eventually, and it, there is a concern about uh, any pollutants that might get into the wetland area. Sure. Um, Don, would you mind addressing these? Sure. Uh, my name is Don Dawes. I'm with Barghausen Engineers. <coughs> Our address is 18215 72nd Avenue South in Kent, Washington. Uh, so regarding th that, let me grab that real quick. Regarding that question uh, about the, the water quality, um, our proposal is to uh, provide uh, detention and water quality for the development per the city's requirements, which based on um, our review so far is level two flow control for the detention and sensitive lake water quality standards. So um, that water from the developed site is going to be uh, treated and detained before it um, leaves the site, which <clears throat> the water will be discharged to that wetland uh, because that's where the water goes currently. So it's percolation, uh, treat, we say treated, what, what, do, what does that mean? We have, um, f for the sensitive lake water quality standards, we're proposing to use a, a combined detention and wet vault. The wet vault part is dead storage and that is like the first water quality system. The second water quality system in that uh, system is a uh, sand filter vault and, and, and then the water is released from there. And uh, Jennifer, would you look at, tell us uh, on record about the second concern that, the, that was raised about the zoning? Just to get that on the record. I'm Christopher Wright with the Development Services Department. I can't speak to the frequent power outages no, comment, but I can speak to the, uh, the zoning question. And basically when um, the North Issaquah area was annexed into the city around 2000, uh, we adopted at the time uh, what we call comparable zoning. So the most similar zoning to what the King County zoning designations were. And I don't think we've changed them since. So um, it, it, it is true that there's a, you know, three or four different zoning designations just in a pretty small area uh, compared to the rest of the city. But that's really, mostly we just inherited that from King County. Okay. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions, clarifications, observations by uh, members question. of the commission? Absolutely. Yeah. Push along. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you mentioned about a sunroom. Um, uh, Doug or Justin? Correct. Yeah. It, it, is that what's being proposed here? Um, while you're thinking, there's sunroom, and I, I want to ask, you, you, is there a kitchen? And then how's your supply going to route into the facility traffic-wise? So, so the sunroom is, is really larger glass windows. There's no sunroof area at all, no glass on the roof. But it's just kind of a little sitting area with wicker furniture off the courtyard. We just call it the solarium kind of sunroom. It's not necessarily all glass with sun coming through. Do you have that in the plan right now? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's, um, oh, okay. better can you kind of show where it is in the site plan there yeah so can you where how do i oh the arrow here can you see the arrow here so um this is the great room here where the dining room is and it's just this little l-shaped room right here that's just kind of tucked away here that's glass in front it overlooks the courtyard um wicker furniture, just kind of different style. That's what we call our sunroom. It's not 
mm -hmm. uh, glass enclosed sunroom so much, but it, it lets more light in and it's right off the courtyard. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I couldn't, uh, I was having the same problems you have trying to locate the sunroom. So this is an interior sunroom, looks Correct. like. Correct, right? it's just inside the building. Oh, it's just a room with a lot of glass. Correct. In window. Uh -huh. Correct. Um, and then your second question, I'm sorry? Uh, the kitchen, uh, how do you function? I, I, uh, as far as the residents are, who are living there, do they come down and have a dining room, set meals? They do, so we have a commercial kitchen that is I need, a, I need uh, better glasses here. <laughs> Blow this up here a little bit. Yeah, do you mind zooming in? Sorry. We have a commercial kitchen that, that cooks all the meals every day. We have two little kitchenettes that are in the great rooms, and I'll point them out here. Um, so if you can see, this is a dining area for this area right here. There's, it looks like a little island right here. There's a little kitchenette right there where the caregivers, uh, life enrichment coordinators, et cetera, can have the residents come in and bake cookies and, and <laughs> that sort of thing. There's an oven and a, uh, not a stove top, but an oven and a microwave there, which is on an emergency shut off switch. So it, it actually has a timer, a key, so that the residents can't just come up and start messing with microwave and oven. So that's what that's for. The commercial kitchen, which is on the, I believe the, let me look closer here. Yeah, this is the commercial kitchen here. You got your hood, um, food prep area, and dish room here. This, that kitchen is state of the art has everything, doesn't have a walk-in cooler, but it has the true three-door fridges and freezers and everything a kitchen would need. So all the meals are prepared there, uh, three meals a day. We also uh, have sandwiches and snacks and treats and yogurts, etc. that is available to residents 24-7 because with Alzheimer's and dementia, you don't always get up at seven o'clock and have breakfast at a normal time. So. We provide meals 24-7, essentially. So. Yeah. So, 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 and I guess the reason why I'm going through this is that, you know, I, I want to make, I, I want to understand how you operate. Sure. You have 60 uh, residents. Correct. Okay. Uh, you provide meals. Uh, the earlier area that you were pointing, I take it, it's a snack area, 24-hour snack. It's Correct. It's not a sit-down meal. Correct. Whereas so the kitchen, the kitchen will provide hot meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Correct. So do you have a dining room for the 60 residents? We have two dining rooms. Okay. So what we have, this wing here has its own dining room and gray room. So this, this would be the sunroom so I was talking about. Oh, so I'm sorry. So um, does this have a point around? So, so both, both wings are, have their own dining room, kitchenette, great room, living room with a fireplace, and solarium. It's a dining room. And so 30 of the, the residents would be on one side and 30 on the other. So there are two separate dining rooms that we hot cart food from the main kitchen area to those, and then the caregivers serve all the residents three meals a day. Okay. And so if a resident gets up at 10 o'clock in the morning and wants breakfast, we have breakfast available for them. Mm -hmm. like the you know, and we have snacks at midnight if they get up at midnight, because a lot of times they don't sleep at night too. So oh. we want to provide them food and nourishment 24 seven. Okay. And that so kind of shows you the dining room there, yeah. Yeah. That's and this is Justin Yonker. That is, you know, really a, trying to create a residential home-like feel with the great room, you know, an open concept home where you've got your dining, your living room, um, and your kitchen all in one spot. Yeah, yeah. So then my next question is how do, you, how do you come in with your supply route and how do you process the food and how do you dispose of your garbage? Um, so 
where's, where's your garbage dumpster located and how's the garbage truck coming in to uh, take care of your garbage? Yeah, this is Justin again. Right now, here, the kitchen's located here. We've got a service truck uh, stall here and uh, dumpster, I believe, is proposed over here. So it's all in this area right here um, uh, nearest to that, that kitchen entrance door. Yeah, like U.S. Foods will deliver food daily or whenever we order it. Mm -hmm. They'll go right through the service door. And, and then our garbage, you know, we recycle cardboard and do as much recycling as we can. And then there'll be a garbage dumpster there. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be your, your uh, service entrance exit access uh, courtyard, sounds like. Uh, like, right. like that area would be this your area. service area. Right. Okay, and Correct. your dumpster. I have my own. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks, I'll let you use it. <laughs> Don't you have one in over there? Yeah. So yeah, that's something I, I guess uh, would be nice to know where it's located, how, how, how the truck comes in, process all the food in and out, um, and then the view that's going to affect the neighbors. Yeah, and so it's on, it's obviously on this side of the building, uh, which this whole side, no neighbors can see it. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, this is Doug. Yeah, that, um, that area. So that area. the side closest to the road, of yeah. course, will just be entry into the building and um, obviously landscaping will be beautiful. And, and this is Justin. So along this, you know, we've got our kitchen here. We've relocated a few common area rooms. We actually have a, an exam room, our laundry facility, um, uh, the med storage. So it's, it's rooms that aren't resident rooms and you know, so you don't have a resident room that's looking right out at the service. That actually is how, it, how it's done in Yakima and it's not ideal. So we changed that with this, uh, with this floor plan. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Any other questions? Well, uh, the uh, west, west of Issaquah Falls City Road on that intersection is a fairly large condominium complex or townhouse complex. And I was just wondering about the architectural concern of, of looking at some kind of uniformity or consistency with that, or it, it sounds like it, it was being designed as a fairly independent, standalone kind of thing. Are you thinking of it? Uh, have you looked at across the street, I guess is my question. We have, mm -hmm. we have. So um, in terms of our design, you know, we have little bump outs, different roof lines on that side. Of the, and this is Doug again, I'm sorry, um, that really break up that side of the building so it's not just one long nursing home looking feel, if you will, uh, with the stacked stone and, and different sidings with different colors to really dress it up. So um, it'll look a lot nicer than across the street. And, and this is Justin, I believe they've got a fence all the way along that area, which, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, we're gonna be right up against there and have it landscaped up into the sidewalk. So it's gonna be very presentable, more than a, than a white fence anyway. So um, were, you, were you wanting something that was compatible with a neighboring property or yes. just wondering? Just concerned that you were looking, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it wasn't obvious. It sounds like you are. I we've, appreciate it. And we've talked with the planning department also that, you know, doing something with that corner because that's a heavily traffic corner, a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, traffic coming into the Highlands and into Issaquah. And so um, doing something a little bit special there um, just because of that. I have a follow up on that question on the because uh, Jennifer, you had made a mention, I think, in the report about one of the elevations needing some more fenestration. Is it that, I'm thinking right, is it that north west side along Isqua Fall City Road you're thinking about? Yes, it was. And it's, it, you know, it comes down to the final product. When we get to SDP, what, what is the product that they're showing us? And if there is more modulation required, if it requires some landscape texturing, uh, something like that, we'll look at it at that time. But yeah, it may need some more. Okay. I wondered, yeah, I wondered if you could actually pull up the elevation on the screen just so we can. Let's see. Uh, I have a, it's on our, our pictures. Yeah, we that's have what I'm thinking. 
just want to make sure that's the one. Yeah, sorry, I can't uh, come close. So this is stack stone here. This is the shake that's a different color. You know, we've got these different roof lines here. If you go to the to staff report, I think it's got an elevation okay, yeah. you can show, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yep. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so there's our, our rendering, and then um, is this is this one better? Is that what you want to look at? Is, is that so at the lower, at elevation on the left side on the lower elevation shot? Here. Not there, but the just to the right of it in the, the drawing right yeah. there. Yeah, there you go. Is yeah. that the one you were talking about, Jennifer? No, this, no. Is, facing the, this is facing the parking lot. Okay. Right, right here. It's elevation and it has the windows, and but you think it's not enough breaking it up. We didn't see the modulation, so we gotcha. didn't see how far the longhouse were. Oh, and right. It's more of a, if we get to the point where we need to modulate more, add some more facade treatment to that elevation, we may need to, but based on, based on more. Thank you. I'm sorry. We, we may require more. We didn't have um, the actual modulation counts and didn't know how much right. it was right so it was more of an fyi if we need to we can condition this um for more articulation later um but it just depends on what they come out with in their final product gotcha. okay thank you uh, I'm, I, if i can follow up on commissioner morgan's uh, question i on the uh on the pl the uh, architectural drawings that we got the uh drawings that are st titled courtyard elevation details and I think it's the next one down or one or two there. Okay, yep, right there. Okay, okay. the bottom one, the bottom right. Uh, Jennifer, that that wall on the left of that structure is kind of striking because there's a lot of wall there. Yeah. Now, I, it, what, that's because that's a courtyard elevation, so that's an internal wall. Is that what I understand from? Looking at this, or is that that would be a, the end of the resident wing? But I can I know that we've tweaked this floor plan, and we actually have some modulation, and it is staggered. Um, th it isn't a one flat service on the end, but that's the end of the resident wings. Okay, so, so. You, that drawing has been modulated since we got this, or since this was sent to the city. Right. What's it look like now? Just, just. Uh, um, one so of the units um, goes out more. Yeah. Um, and there's another roof line on it. And the, <coughs> the end of these, this is Doug. The end of these actually don't aren't shown for, or won't even be noticed from the road. This well, goes. Was, yeah. It goes into the forest side. So you know where the Highlands yeah. Drive goes down, and there's that big embankment you won't even see the building from the road yeah and that was my that was my question if, if it's an internal uh, exposure on this then the concern is not as great as it is for external facades uh, that that public and passers-by and neighbors would see so that was my question about whether or not the courtyard is basically uh, in, an internal area where the public can't see that wall with the two windows in it. So the wall they're discussing is, I'm gonna run over to the screen because I don't have a pointer. <laughs> right here? Okay. Yep. And, it's, and not, it's not visible from, from the road. Right, and this. This wing, this end here, and this end here, and yeah, there's there's enough topography here that from Highlands Drive you can't you can't see in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And I, I also want to just point out the elevation that staff was worried about is this one. I'm going to run back over to the screen. Here, Jennifer. Right there. Uh huh. Along with the football field. Gotcha. 
there is uh, less tree cover in that area. On the east side of the property, there's a large berm and a lot of, um, a lot of trees, a lot of new trees and a lot of old tre older trees. Um, so it's, and it's also elevated quite high. There's a very large mm -hmm. berm there. And I can go back to the site photos if you wanna see, I'm actually standing okay. on the trail if you need to. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I've got a question about parking. Escape, uh, unless you want to stay with site design. Oh, or? We're, we can yeah. come back to it. Sure. Unless, Carl, did you, did you have a question about site design? Yes, I think. <laughs> um, the fire access, have you guys, uh, it, it, there's an awful lot of it's talked about here about model, uh, computer model will have to be done Turn radius, we required to meet fire code, perimeter walkway. Uh, does all that stuff meet already? Have you done this so that that fire, that fire trucks will be able to get in there and get around and does it already meet the requirements? Yeah, so Mark Lawrence was in two of our meetings. Um, so he's provided a lot of feedback. Um, this is a 90 degree, I believe it's called the 90 degree um, radius here, which is one of the Appar fire apparatus um, standards, you know, you got your hammerheads and all of that. So that that is the 90 degree turnaround. And then we've got um, what, what he's proposed is uh, walkways around the entire community if, if it's not within 150 feet of the truck with knock boxes and a tie-in so they can just, you know, carry their hoses around and tie right into the fire line. Okay, I'd pipe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask Jennifer, I, I got very confused over the tree preservation paragraph, and, and I'm still confused. Um, page seven of nine, you talk about the 30% of the total caliper significant trees is retained, according to the tree and preservation code, 30%. And, and then in the next page, it says 25%. Are required to retain 25 percent, and then then the numbers none of those numbers added up to me. So I just ignore all that, and everything's fine with the trees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. sir. Um, I, I did make in my presentation. I tried to clarify a little bit, but the short of the long is that they very much meet the tree retention requirements. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the parking question, I have first for uh, Jennifer, a question on, um, it says that there's 44 stalls required and they're providing 44, but then there's a comment that says, additionally, more parking stalls may be required than shown in order to meet the code provisions for minimum parking. And I didn't understand, because it sounded like we said they're meeting code, but more may be needed to meet code. So parking provisions are based on employees at the max shift and mm -hmm. on the number of units provided. Mm -hmm. And so if any of those numbers change by the time we get to SDP, the oh, parking okay. numbers may also change. So I, you know, while I say it meets the requirements, we don't necessarily know that until we get to the decision making period. Okay, okay, great, thank you. Then a question for the applicant, I guess your experience from what it sounds like you've provided exactly enough for the minimum. What's your experience with parking um, at your Yakima facility? Well, I guess you're not at 100% yet, but I guess what's your, what you, what's your feeling about the 44 being required? Is that more than enough? Sort of right um, out enough? Or? Yeah, this is Justin. So we've got 48 on our current site plan with, with small tweaks, but uh, obviously none of our residents drive. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about staff, visitors, and then the occasional service. So um, of any multifamily type building, memory care has the least amount of traffic. Um, you know, the good thing that we have lots of visitors, mm -hmm. I think we'll use the parking spaces, but um, um, you know, we, we went through our staffing model in, in detail at stabilization um, with the, the standard of, of one parking space for every two units. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we got the 44. Um, it just so happened that it ended up because we're we're utilizing this this space 
uh, to the max. Um, Do so. you think it'll be an adequate number then? Yeah, um, you know, another thing that, that um, we've talked about, um, the transit center down the road, you know, uh, our largest staff uh, population is caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, they don't make a ton of money. Um, this is, a, you know, anywhere from 10 to $15 job. Um, they probably don't live in the highlands. And so having that just down the road, it's gonna be a huge benefit from a staffing perspective because it's convenient. Um, you know, if we've got a community bus, we will have a community bus, which um, even on staff changes could provide transportation from the transit station if they don't wanna walk. So right. um, we've you thought got, about that aspect of it as well. And you've got a bus stop at the other side of the street, the intersection right. too. So. Yeah, so the, yeah, so the transit to this location is, um, is really good. Great, okay, thank you. Okay. Then the other question I had had to do with um, access to Isquah Falls City Road. As you mentioned, it's a very busy road, especially at rush hour, uh, fairly high traffic volumes. It, um, it couldn't tell from the site plans, but it just from the location, it didn't seem like the driveways would line up between the condo complex and this project. And I wondered uh, if you've looked at any traffic models, would you have to do a right in, right out only, or um, just your sort of thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we are doing a right in, right out only. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, it could take a half hour to get across. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Just to follow on Commissioner Morgan's question, are, the sh are your shifts going to be um, rush hour ty types of shifts, uh, so, or are they gonna be different? So theoretically they wouldn't be coinciding with rush hour. Yeah, first shift is 6 a.m. to two, and uh, the, the two o'clock when that shift ends, the staff actually don't leave until 2.30 because it's a switch over your, the, the new shift comes in at two, the that shift leaves at 2.30 and there's that handoff patient handoff, if you will. Okay. Um, the next shift starts at, I believe, 8 o'clock. Um, no, 10 o'clock. It's, it's slightly off those peak hours, really, yeah. to answer your question. And, and when we were using that, because the parking had a, the max resident count, which actually our highest staffing is in the morning, um, you know, getting people up and ready to go. So... Um, but those peak hours, if you're talking, you know, uh, four to six in the evening, we'd be at the end of it, and we're out, you know, at 6 a.m. Hopefully, they'll be arriving at 5:45-ish. So, so uh, the right in, right out. I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, your the right in, the traffic would be coming to the northeast from the southwest on Fall City Road, right turn into the facility any traffic exiting the facility on the Isquah <laughs> City Road, which is the only way in and out, right? That's, there's one, one egress, uh, ingress, and they would turn right. Correct. Okay. This is Doug, yes. Yeah. And it, you know, um, with the loop around a black nugget back out to Fall City Road, it's a, you know, I mean, just getting around that whole area, you've got to do that, not just for this site. Follow on on the parking. I noticed that you talk about uh, barrier free parking. Is that an addition to the 44? I thought I counted 44 plus two handicap parking. And is two the right number for that number of parking? Because it's a medical facility. I don't know what the, Jennifer, I'm not sure what the code says in regards to how many they need. Um, the, when we calculate the number of required stalls, the, uh, the handicap stalls are counted in that. So if, we, if the code requires 44 stalls, that includes however many are required for uh, accessibility. Um, I'm not sure offhand whether that's meeting the, the we, we rely on the, the uniform building code to tell us how many yeah. handicap stalls there need to be. So that, that's something we absolutely check at the site development permit stage okay. to make sure they have enough. Other questions? I have one, one more. The, is there going to be some security consideration for the wetlands there to prevent, deter residents from wandering? 
want, want, you know, getting in there and not being able to get out? This is Doug. Yeah, they won't have any access to it. This is a lockdown building. Um, the only access to the out of doors they have um, is to the courtyard, which is all fenced and secured with mag locks and, and the whole nine yards. And every time a door opens in this building for a resident to go into the courtyard, all the pagers go off. So all the, all the caregivers will be notified. And then we have a radio system that clears when someone goes out. So um, they'll be supervised going out the front door to go to a doctor's appointment or go on a bus ride. They'll all be supervised, so. And the courtyard then, when they're in the courtyard, that's also supervised? It is also supervised. Yeah. In your, uh, 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 just to follow on to one of the questions, the frequent power outages, do you have alternate power at this location? If you're relying a lot on this electronics, modern technology, doors opening and closing, and if power goes out, what happens? Do you have a, a standby generator that kicks in? Do you have that available, or do you just rely on huge power eventually getting it fixed? Yeah, this is Justin. We've done it both ways. In Yakima, we don't have a generator, but we've got, obviously, the state needs to know what your emergency plan is. We've got alternate methods of heat through natural gas, battery-powered lighting, that sort of thing. In our Kennewick assisted living building, which is adjacent to the memory care, we do have a generator. So taking that into context, um, we'll probably lean in that direction towards the generator. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, question, I, I know that this is a privately funded facility, um, but yet you still need to go through the Department of Health, Washington Department of, Department of Health. Um, and is, do they have a ratio of how many units, single units, and how many that's uh, double units? I, you provided eight, I think, that's double. Um, eight units that's uh, comp. Uh, companion rooms and then the rest 52 are single ones. So do they have a ratio that says if you provide this facility you should have a, a correct ratio or something like that? This is Doug, no, there is no requirement. Uh, most uh, Alzheimer dementia communities are double units and it's for profitability and, and cost reduction. We're taking it a step further and wanting the, the residents to have their own private rooms. With Alzheimer's and dementia, sometimes um, they want to have a roommate. It calms them. So we want to have that option as well. And it is a price point, too. Um, if it is a shared unit, it is less expensive for the family members or whoever's paying their, their way. Mm -hmm. This is a private pay building. Medicaid is not part of this building at this point. Um, we'll have... Um, uh, probably 10% Medicaid that will be grandfathered in after we're open for a year. And they'll be, you know, when as people spin down their income, we're never going to put someone on the street if they run out of money. So we will have some Medicaid units, but that'll be a year after we open. Mm -hmm. So uh, so if you run out of patients that's uh, Alzheimer, um, I don't know if you will or not, but just say if you would, and, and so you have some vacant rooms, do you take in uh, elderly with other disease then? No, this is focused just on Alzheimer's dementia and Parkinson's, which Parkinson's is a related, you know, a lot of people with Parkinson's end up with the Lewy body or the Alzheimer's dementia part of it. So yeah, no, we, this is a focused care. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to, to mix populations so yeah and do you have medical staff that would take care of any emergency then full absolutely 24 7 uh -huh. yep all the caregivers uh, med techs rn yep mm -hmm. so this is a 24 7 care mm -hmm. yep thank you, thank you. Are there any other questions observations Mr. Morgan? Are we going to do a round of comments? Yes. Okay. 
I guess that's we're into the comment phase now. I think we've got everything clarified, right? So we'll go into uh, comments and observations. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like you've done a good job of of, of considering the aspects. I like the siting of it. I think uh, I think the traffic control is is going to be an issue. I I drive that intersection every day several times, and and uh, but with Black Diamond being an opportunity to be able to go back around that right in right out makes pretty good sense to me. I think you're, that's going to work well. It looks good to me. Thank you, Mr. Long. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I. I like the design. Uh, I think I would do the same thing with the parking next to the pond. Uh, you provide a real nice view as you come in. You have this pond rather than uh, putting somewhere else. Um, I like the, uh, to a degree, the modulation. I, I think you can do more. I like the idea of uh, having the two-person unit as a set out uh, so that, that breaks the, the long wall that you have. I do have concern about your service area because I, I think where you have it, where you're thinking about having it, that's where you have a few of those units that's, um, that's right there. And I, I, I suspect there's probably, you know, the truck coming in, uh, unloading, unloading uh, uh, supplies and picking up garbage. That's where it's going to happen and that's where you have your three pay, uh, residents that, unit that's there. So you might want to kind of look at that. Um, I like the 20 foot corridors that you mentioned. That's a wide corridor and I take it there's a lot of things that's happening in that corridor where you create this uh, facade that's a ceiling. Um, uh, I, I, I see on the plan that you have a clear story. But so I, I'm trying to think how are you going to incorporate that clear story with the, uh, the ceiling that you're enhancing to, to create this uh, interior uh, street facade. So I'm not sure how you, uh, how you would uh, approach that, although I like the idea. Uh, so either clear story or this, this interior facade, um, that's a good idea and then I think it would be very pleasant for the residents. Um, again, you know, I, I think you've done a good job. Um, there's still some things that you need to kind of look at it, and that's the service area. Um, and then the sunroom, um, I'm kind of surprised that you call it interior room, every, a sunroom. Uh, to me, a sunroom is something that's exposed to the outside, where it sounded like it's an interior room with, with a lot of windows, interior windows, and you call that a sunroom. I would call it a library or reading room or something instead of a sunroom. But the thought of a sunroom is probably good for patients to, the, the well-being of the patients being outside, looking out in the courtyard, and if you can create something nice in that courtyard, that would be very ideal for the residents, uh, for the well-being. And you probably have some activities there that uh, help the um, residents uh, in that courtyard, that would be good and something directly that leads them out into the courtyard. But overall, I, I think it's a good design. Thank you. Morgan? Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming in and for your presentation. We greatly appreciate it and um, appreciate all the process you've been going through with, in the explanation of the archeological digs. I didn't realize you'd have to do that much. Um, I think you've got a very nice looking project. It seems like a, an excellent fit for this site, which is a fairly difficult island of a piece of property to work with. Um, and I, so I think it's a great fit and I very much like your building design, the materials you've used, the modulations. Uh, I, I drive this road every day. I don't think you need to be concerned about trying to match the design of the condos across the street. It's a good distance. There is a wall there, as you've mentioned. And I don't think this building has to perfectly match that anyway. So uh, I think you've come up with an attractive building. And I agree with staff's comments about what well, sounds like we'll just find more detail in some of that modulation. But I think it's all looking very good. The um, uh, My main concern would be the access actually probably off of Isquah Falls City Road. I think people coming on to Isquah Falls City Road, taking a right, um, can time things well enough. My concern would be people 
that are turning on Isqua Falls City Road and somebody two cars back that doesn't see a signal that's going 40 miles an hour and didn't realize a car two cars ahead was going to stop and take a 90 degree turn in. So anything you can do in engineering that, whether it's a more of a, a curved entry into the site or if there's a way to get a deceleration lane or something like that, um, just hopefully to prevent some of those rear end accidents that might happen. Um, and uh, the, I, I guess finally, I very much appreciate the fact that it's a Northwest company doing it, not a large national firm. So thank you very much. Okay. Yes, I, I, I echo Commissioner Morgan's comments. Thank you. I particularly appreciated the pictures of what your existing facility looked like because unfortunately, the, the, the staff report and what we got is a little thin from what we normally see. <clears throat> I, I would like to have seen a bigger, a better presentation of what the, the room layout was like. Um, I still don't have a clue as to where the dining room is uh, from what you guys said. I, I, I mean, it's, it's an initial phase. An awful lot of the things we saw in the staff report, uh, lighting have to be determined. The parking has to be finished up. Uh, loading space has to be determined where that is. A lot of this is to be determined, and so we're, we're sort of playing in a vine on, on a sort of a macro scale of what the project looks like. I think it's a wonderful design. Mm -hmm. um, from a, from a care from a taking care of somebody with a problem, uh, looks very livable. Uh, your entrance lobby looks similar to what I saw at Paris in Las Vegas with the <laughs> clouds in the sky and a movie theater over here. And how much does it cost? Because maybe. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, I thought it was a great job, and I think it's a good project for that site, particularly when you consider what you're going to have to do to adjust for the wetland area. I think you're maximizing the particular piece of property about the best you can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also agree with all the comments that have been made. I think this is a very appropriate uh, siting or use of the site, uh, particularly with the wetland there. Um, and I, I do have one question, and just a clarification I should have brought up earlier, but uh, for traffic that is heading northeast to southeast on Fall City Road, in other words, toward towards town, uh, what's to preclude them from trying to make a left-hand turn into the facility? Across, in other words, go cut across a oncoming traffic. Let's look at the road. So you'll notice there's a turn lane here. <laughs> and this is just the existing conditions. This is not what's going to be required in, in terms of improvement. So this is just existing conditions. Um, there is a, I think it's a double yellow line through the center and a turn lane up as you get closer towards the intersection here. Hey, Jennifer, can you show approximately where the entrance is gonna be? Or can somebody, please? So, so there's a, there, they, what you're saying is they can't make a legal left turn uh, I think across th that? I think they're going to be constrained by the left, the double left turn lane to go on, on the Pine Lake Road. Okay. Which so starts It really goes back pretty far. Right. Like and almost. It, around the south, the SE, the southeast right there is about where it starts. Okay. All right. Well, that, that, was, that was my concern that, that it might be called a right in and right out, but that, uh, you know, people might still try to make a left-hand turn in there, and that's a real, as it has been noted, it's a very busy road. Um, uh, the issue I want to make real sure, this has come up in the past, and this is just an observation, um, the, the issue of notification in the packet, it uh, said that uh, the staff sent out notification to 70, I don't remember the exact number, but a specific number of, of uh, people there uh, that are neighbors. And uh, I don't know if there was also, I've, I don't travel that road very much, but I was up there the other day and I happened to remember that the site was there and I drove around it and I didn't see a street sign saying that there's gonna be development. Can you remind me of what the requirement is there? 
Yeah, there's different public notice requirements depending on where the project is in the application process. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a community conference, it only requires the mailing within adjacent property owners within 300 feet. Right. When they apply for their site development permit, that's when it kicks in a whole other yeah. level of newspaper ad, proposed land use action signs. Yep. Well, as you know, that's that's a ongoing concern of mine because frequently we we have in the past we've heard uh, people whose primary complaint was that they didn't their neighbors and their five feet off of the line and they didn't know anything about it. So just as long as we've got that covered. Uh, when it comes to the actual application and what we've seen here tonight, I agree with my fellow commissioners. Uh, I was uh, quite impressed with the fact that the building does not seem to be uh, imposing itself on any of the neighbors there. The structure, particularly it being a one-story facility, uh, automatically, as far as I'm concerned, mitigates a, a lot of what we tend to pay attention to, which is sight line and uh, vista obstruction and that that kind of thing. So right off the bat when I saw it was a one-story facility I thought well, that's that's going to be and then my understanding of the site is it's going to be uh, There will be enough tree retention in there to further mitigate the view uh, from it I was also impressed by the fact that you said you're not going to have a sign or at least at this point There's not going to be a, a major signage obviously that will be required if you do but uh, the fact that you've taken what appears to be a low-key approach to fitting into the neighborhood would, would go along with that. I, I'm not against the sign, obviously. People are going to have to know where the facility is when they're coming in there. Uh, the material itself, uh, frankly, reflects the Pacific Northwest, and this may be a, a factor of the, that you're a Northwest company. But uh, a lot of times we end up suggesting that, they, that the applicant consider more use of stone and, and uh, things like that. So the fact that you've come in with that is, uh, is, is nice. It, uh, it fits, fits in kind of our vision of what we'd like to see up there. So all in all, uh, I think the uh, concerns that the commission has had have been answered by both the staff and the applicant. I very much appreciate your coming in and giving us the presentation and the level of detail and willingness to answer the questions that you have. And uh, with that, if there are no more observations or questions, uh, and there were no members of the public here tonight, uh, so Jennifer, just on the, the what, what is the process for you, for staff, to, do you hit reply to that automatically and, and report to this person what was said? I mean, normally they, they're here and they, you know, hear what their concerns, how their concerns were addressed, so. When he, when the person emailed me, I responded via email, letting that person know that I would be passing this information on to the commission, making sure that it became an attachment to the staff report. So that person knows that my intention was to, to bring it forward. I'm, I'm happy to respond to him. Uh, I, it, that's not necessary. I or mean, her. The, the primary thing, as far as I know, is that w we want the, any, any member of the public that goes to the trouble of expressing a concern or an issue or an observation that they understand that it was brought to the commissioner's attention. Okay. All right. Mr. Chair, I wonder if the applicant would have any questions of us or any clarification. Good point. Anything that you need from the Development Commission in terms of clarification for maybe the why we ask certain questions? Uh, I don't think so. Thank you for your time as well. All right. Well, what, Well, I'd like to take credit for that, <laughs> but it wasn't us. <laughs> there is, in Issaquah, there is an Urban Village Development Commission that uh, was chartered several years ago specifically to look at that type of, uh, of development that was, uh, it's obviously clearly defined, and there are two, it's Talos and the Highlands, there are two uh, of urban villages in uh, in Issaquah now, and uh, the Highlands is the larger of the two. The other one is on State Road 900 between us and Renton, uh, but that's a separate commission, and that uh, their work has been nationally recognized too in, on a number of occasions. All right. All right. Well, with that, if there being uh, no more comment, uh, again, we thank you very much for. Uh, your concern and for your presentation and we understand that you're going to be working with the city uh, with the staff a lot more and we'll look forward to seeing what comes out of this. <coughs> with that, we'll declare the meeting adjourned.
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is uh, bathroom. So.